before and I don't get to it, make sure you put it in the question box for me, yeah? Good, great stuff. Let's see if Kristen is in the house. Kristen, are you in the house, my darling? I hope so, Kristen knows all the technical stuff. Um, I know some of the, hey, she's here, Kristen's here, that's amazing. So the teen is here. So right guys, so, balayage. Invented by the French, broadcast by the Americans, personalized by hairdressers like you and me around the world. In 1974, the Carita sisters did their first open air balayage and it was an iconic picture of all this cotton wool and everything. 1974, it's a long time ago. Um, but in 19, nine, the mid 1980s, Jack Dessange, a French brand, really honed that skill and launched it to the world. And then in the 90s, and that's part of my story when I was in the USA, the Americans kind of really picked up on balayage then and started broadcasting it to everybody. And since then it's just grown and grown and grown and grown. And I've been doing this for over 20 odd years. I've never heard a question that I can't answer. Um, you can't stump me. We've got lots of things to get through. Um, but I think it's always interesting to, because people think balayage is so new. It's not, it's not a trend. It's a technique that we need to be able to do in the salon so that we can be commercially successful. It's a quicker technique as well. So if you can get the skill down, you can work quicker, which means you can work smarter, which means you can make more money. And at this day and age, we need to be able to work quicker and smarter, that's for sure. Now, if I start sweating, it's I've got all these lights on me and it's 80 something degrees in London. So of course it's way too hot for an Englishman. But anyway, we're gonna get through it. First off, here she is, my lovely doll head. What I wanted to do, first of all, was I wanted to show you how I section. Um, because I think, there I am, because I think it's really important to know the difference between a proper balayage application and something like a TZ light or a woven foil. They both have their place in the salon. I'm not saying one is right and one is wrong. And when a client comes in, she's usually asking for a balayage look. So sometimes freehand's gonna work for you. Sometimes freehand isn't and you need to do a TZ light or something like that. But what I'm going to do today is I'm talking about balayage and I want to show you some sectioning. So first of all, let me just take a straight line across the back for you. Now, if you take a slice, it could be anywhere on the head, there, so you can see that thickness of it. Now, if you paint this section, through the top here, more than likely product is going to come through on the underneath, which is gonna cause you a bleed line. What you'll also notice on a real human, not a doll head, and my God, I've used lots of doll heads recently, is that the hair on the ends, if you take a slice, is much finer. Let me show you here. There, you see how fine that is? So if you've taken a slice, you've really got not a lot of weight of hair at the bottom. So it means if you saturate that end, it's sort of going to disappear. Now, if you think about when you do a blonde foil highlight and you do them over and over and over again, and it just becomes a solid blonde and the client's saying, oh, I'd like some darker pieces in it. What she's really talking about, she wants some contrast. Now, if you take your section this way, I'm gonna show you. Right, you can see that I did a scoop there. Now see that, now it's slightly exaggerated for you, obviously, but there, you see that depth? And you see that it's a triangle, but what you also see, guys, is that you've got more hair at the bottom. Now, balayage is literally a surface technique in its truest form. So you'd paint on the surface, and then you'd saturate that end, just the last couple of inches, or inch, and that will give you a weight of blonde that when she's dried and processed and dried and blow dried and everything, you'll get those pops of lightness at the end, which everyone seems to love. But you'll also, have this depth of hair underneath here, which will give you the contrast, light, dark, pop. Does that make sense to everyone? I hope so. I hope it does. Oh, I want a funny color. Now, the, I usually, when I'm working, so if I'm doing a full head, I have a basic section pattern that I work with. Fundamentally, you need to work with the natural hair growth. This is my dog has just come to join us. Bentley, he's gone downstairs. You need to work with the, the natural hairline. You need to work with the natural growth pattern. You need to make sure that you're working with the cowlicks and things that are going on up here. 
but generally there's a sort of section pattern that I work with and it's sort of the basis of how I operate. And I'm going to show that to you. So first of all, from the crown, that's my dog and the postman, from the crown to the back of the ear. So sorry guys, this is what happens when you film at home. And from the crown to the back of the ear, that's your first two sections. And that leaves you with this section here. Now I might pop in ponytail pieces, which are always nice. I'm not gonna do those today for you though. And then this is my first section pattern. So if we look at that here, let me just get that right for you. Nice. There. So it's a deep V. Nice, there we go. And then I scoop all of this out the way. There, so that's my first section pattern. Okay, now you do need to let me roll this up a little bit for you. Here we go, there. That's better. And just pop that there, get rid of those. Good. What we want is, we want all that like so. Now this means two things. Am I still live? Yes. Um, it means two things. One, if you work in a straight line across, you put in more. More means that you slightly can overwhelm the hair, which means that it won't have that balayage feel. And two, it means it'll take you longer. So working in this kind of pattern allows you to work quicker. It allows you to put enough in that creates the contrast and gives you the pop without oversaturating the hair. You like that? Good, I've lost all my comments. Let me put a comment in, oh, they're back there. Gosh, I'm gonna put a kiss in. There, come on, right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm now gonna show you four different gestures. Now, for me, I broke balayage down into four different gestures. There is classic, which is for your sort of typical highlighted blonde girl, which is lovely. There's creative, and that's a kind of a more of a lived in look. It doesn't go to the root. I'm gonna show you that too. Then there is California. It's really massive, it's a heavy paint, but it's uber, uber soft, and it's a really good one to work with. Californian, classic go to the root and then finally there is um, micro these are tiny ones they can go to the root or not and they are great for hair flippers people who have partings fringes bangs as we might say in the USA so there's four different things that you can do they're intermix mixable so that you can play around with them to create a unique pattern for your clients that nobody else can repeat remember Balayage is unique as your fingerprint, guys. Nobody else can do it like you. Um, so I'm gonna show you those and I'm gonna show you variations of them because there is, it's not one size fits all. So you could have a micro, which is really, really tiny, but then you could have a, bit, a larger micro, which is single, or you could have a micro on steroids maybe that's big. And you can do that with all of them so you can play around. So I'm gonna show you each gesture and then I'm gonna show you variations of it. And then I'm also gonna show you two different face frames for there. You looking forward to that? Let me put my phone down. Now I would have an apron on, but it's way too hot for me. I just can't face it. So my Blommy clay, I've mixed it with 40 volume. There you go. That's the consistency. It's like cream cheese. It's easy to mix it with your back of your comb. It, the mixture is one to one and a half. That's the ideal one for me. But you, what you want is you want that cream cheese, um, icing sugar, icing on a cake type consistency. If you don't have it, it won't lay on the top of the surface of the hair and it will run through, which will cause you leaks and all sorts of things that make us sweat and panic, which we don't want either. Now, clay is designed to give you up to, up to seven levels of lift with 40 volume. And I know that everyone's frightened of 40 volume, but the reason for that is that the top seals over and what you get is you get a, a dry outer shell and then inside is still moist and it keeps lifting. There's no oxygen getting in there. If you go with 30 volume, you will get up to 30 volume. Th three, four levels of lift with 30 volume. Okay, right, let's get on with the game, okay? So the trick is take your brush, but don't dip it in the bowl, okay? Don't keep your balayage brush out of the bowl, have another bowl, another comb in there, or a tint brush in there, and you're bored. So let's start off with 
one of the bigger applications because what I find is generally I like to do a bigger application underneath. I cover a bigger surface of hair and then I get smaller as I go through the top. Now you can see here that I've taken a depth still. So we've got a V shape here and I'm going to show you it in its classic form. Bring that down for you. So you can see that the tension is really tight. These are kind of key things here, guys. The tension's really tight and I load in the middle. Now, a lot of people want to kind of go up to the root straight away. That's going to cause you problems. You might get some lining and you might not be able to get out of it. So I always hold my tension tight and start here. Build your shape. Now, this is a three point which we're going to turn into a California. So you can see that the tension really tight. And you can see that I'm building that shape. There. Now, if it's not white, it won't be light, guys. So make sure you've got enough on. The trick is to just keep loading in the middle and feather up. Load in the middle, feather up, there. Now you can see that shape, do you like that? There's nothing underneath, guys. So although it looks really heavy and scary, it's only the top surface that's gonna lift up. And then we're gonna go here, make sure that shape still feels good. And you can see, you don't wanna see any hair underneath. You really don't. You want to just see a white, where you've painted white. Now, this is obviously going to lift a little bit darker. So you're going to go from darker transitioning through till your lightest point, which is going to be your ends, and then you saturate that. And just push that through. That is a classic W shape. Okay. Now, that's lovely because what that's done is the dark spaces, which I call negative space, that's gonna be soft there. So it's gonna be light, depth, light, depth, light, coming through to light, light, lightest at the end, which is what you want. Right, now I'm gonna do this one, but I'm gonna do a steroid version of it. I'm gonna do a pumped up big one. Now this one, if you check my Instagram, you'll see that I do this a lot in the salon. Make sure your section's nice and clean, otherwise it's, uh, it can get confusing. Let's just pop that out of the way there. So again, we're still going to take a deep V. Let's bring it to you so you can see. Everyone good so far? Everyone's questions being answered? Everyone helping out? Yeah, great. Good, good, good. So I'll put more products on my board. I'm going to take another deep V here. Just let me just clean this up. It feels a little bit messy to me. Better to fix it now than to try and do it later. I need that piece in there and I need that out of the way. Good. Right, I'm going to take another deep V. Make sure you comb it down. Good. That's good. Now, still load in the middle, and the clay's been designed specifically for this kind of work, so it, may, it takes the effort out. It makes life easier, and I'm all for an easy life, guys. Let's bring that there, there. Paint to the root. If you can get to the root, you can do anything. And remember, fashions change. Clients might start wanting something more with a defined, not so defined root, more smudged. And you can see that I'm building that shape in there. Okay. What this is going to give you is if you see the lighter pieces against the dark in there, that's going to give you a lovely kind of um, baby light feel. And it's ideal for bases eight, nine, maybe a seven that heavy an application anyway. 
lovely. And you can see that there's nothing underneath, guys, at all. Never, never anything underneath. Nice. Still nothing underneath. Then we're going to come down. There. There we go. Do you like that? So can you see the difference? That one, which will be have more depth in it, that one that's going to be brighter. Now the clay, of course, is same as the Blombi 9 Plus in the sense that it has bond enforcing technology built into it. So as long as you use the care range afterwards, you're going to get that reinforcement, that lovely, beautiful, strong hair that Blombi is known for. Um, so just make sure that you're using the care range too. I'm going to take my next section for you. A little pro tip. If you section off with the back of your tint brush, you don't have to put your tint brush down to pick up your um, balayage brush and, or, your, or your tail comb. And that means that you save minutes. And a couple of minutes all the way through the day adds up to a service. So just think about those things. Right, the next section, looking good. Bring her into you. So still take that deep V because we're under the occipital bone. That's how I like to think about it. There. So it's still a deep V. Okay, now the depth in between depends on how much the hair there is. If it's um, somebody that's got very fine hair, you want to make sure you put less in simply because it will be overwhelmed by too many. If somebody's got thicker hair, you need to put a few more in. So just think about the hair and the haircut as well, because the haircut will determine where you put the pieces. So back to our clay, fresh scoop. Now here, we're going to do a um, classic application. This is for your typical blonde client that maybe has foils and wants to move on to something else. You know, in the UK, it's been 14 weeks since we've been at work, so I think there'll be lots of conversions from foil to balayage. Um, we shall see. Now, the same section again. Take a deep V. Now, this one, I'm going to do a bit smaller. So you can see that there, and you can see that there. Let's lower this down. You can find it. Trying to hold it and do that is impossible. There we go. Great. So I'm going to take that deep V. Now, this is interesting one, I think. It's one of my favourites that I use a lot. Keep your tension tight. Load in the middle. And you can see that I've created a V shape again. Lots of V's in all this. If you see something you don't like, just wipe it off. Don't leave it until you get to the basin and then start panicking. Now, there, right to the root. This dark section here is super important. The deeper this V here, the softer this is going to be. The higher the V, the chunkier it is. So I'm going to do one like this, and I'm going to show you another couple. Make sure you've got plenty of product on and you don't take it off. And then, boom, saturate those ends. There. Let me show you that up close because I think it's really lovely. right to the root, really, really soft. And you can see that it's white all the way along, which is really, really important. So I'm gonna do one next to it. I'm gonna change it slightly, and I'm gonna make it this V less depth, and I'll show you how that makes it look chunky. <clears throat> nice. Still take that V. So we've still taken that there. And that's really important. I think as hairdressers, we quite often want to put more in because we kind of want to give value for money. 
And that sometimes defeats the process because sometimes less truly is more. Right, so there is the outer shape. Still got that depth in there. But if you started loading higher up, like so, you've got less depth compared to the other one. So this one's going to be a little bit heavier. But you can see the way I hold my brush, guys, it's always on an angle. It's never like you do with a foil. There. Right, so it's still pretty. Oh, it's still pretty. It's going to be a little bit lighter on there. So you can see the difference. Same panel. There you go. Her base colour, the doll head's base colour, doll heads, I think she's a level, maybe a five or a six. Um, doll heads, of course, have been treated. Um, they've been coloured. They're all different hairs from different people. Um, they never truly lift to give you something really dynamic. Um, but, you know, it's a doll head. I can't wait to get back to do some real humans, which is only two weeks away. And again, we're going to take this section again. So you can see underneath, it's still like that. And we're going to do it even softer. So I'm going to start right low down, but keeping that tension tight. Elevate out slightly. Now this would be super soft. Keep your tension really tight though, because the board doesn't go underneath, just on the very ends. Look at that. You like that? And then we're just going to go through and then saturate the ends again. So it's still a classic application, but there's one. So that's going to be really soft, light depth, light there. So you can see that. And then you've got this one that's chunkier and then this one that's in the middle. So it's kind of like you've got one application, which is classic, and you can really play around with it to create different looks with different needs. Now the trick is always to make sure that you can get comfortable going to the root. If you can go to the root, you can do absolutely everything. And that takes practice. But what, you, what I don't want to do is do everything and then have to do a root shallow afterwards because that just causes me more problems and takes longer. I like to use the natural color that I can work with unless she's a tinted client. Right. Okay, who's my, who am I making? Hey, who am I making sleepy? I saw, I just read that comment, how funny. I hope that you're enjoying this. So let's do another one and let's play around with the whole thing. So, again, still taking that depth there, which is really, really important. Now, see, load in the middle, guys. If you can kind of stick these, I remember when I learned these, these sort of phrases, and I kind of just kept rehearsing them. So I'm always saying in my head, load in the middle, feather to the root, load in the middle, feather to the root. If it's not white, it won't be light. Now, there, you see? But what if you wanted that to be a bit heavier? You could just go like this, and turn it into a smaller version of the one we did underneath. There. You've got three lighter pieces, so you've got less depth in between, maybe a little bit more highlighted looking. So my thought process is always to think about what the client's asking for, have a plan, and then not, not do the same on every single section, because then it looks all samey, samey, matchy, matchy. I don't like my sofa to match my chair and I don't want my client's hair to match everyone else's. There. So I just like that. Yes, I am gonna save this. I'm gonna save this and I'm also, it's also going, it's going on this channel and it's also gonna go on my channel as well, guys. So it will be there for you to watch. So do you see, so simple, but you've created 
different looks in there, which I think is really, really nice. Right, let's do some micro. Again, I'm just gonna use my comb as I put my brush down, but we've got more time today together, which is always nice. It's great to see familiar faces on here as always, so thank you for all joining in. Now, have you noticed that the V now isn't so deep because we've gone past the exhibital bone, so I want to start turning it into a curve to match the top of the head, okay? So we're always thinking about the natural hair, what it's gonna do, what we want it to do, what we're trying to create. Now, can you all see? Just tap that. Yeah, that's better. Great. Now, micro. You're like, oh, so tiny. Here's one. So we're still taking that V. Let me bring her back so you can see that a little bit better. There, there. Now, these are great for fringes, bangs, as you might say in the USA. They're also great for, you know that client that says, oh, well, I part my hair here, and, but I also part it here, and I part it here, and sometimes I part it at the back. Those kind of clients are gonna need a little bit more coverage, so micro balayage is great for those areas. They're super tiny, but they're super effective. Again, load in the middle. Load in the middle, feather to the root. Load in the middle, feather to the root. And saturate. A little bit more on that one. There, tiny, tiny, tiny. Now, you can do it a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller. So let's do a little slightly bigger. So you can see that the section itself is a little bit bigger. Boom, but we've still got that lift underneath there. That's really important. Load in the middle. But what you don't want to do is you don't want to use the whole section in the sense of you still want it to be tiny at the root. And then you've got a little bit more weight of color through the bottom there. You can see that, see how that paints on so nicely. It's really great for your hair flippers, guys. Really great, and it's great for converting there. Show you that. See? Slightly different sizes. That one there. I didn't put my gloves on. I'm going to be in so much trouble. Gosh. I forgot. <laughs> They're on. I just realised that. Oh, first mistake of the day. All right. Okay. So let's get on with the next one. And let's show you a bigger piece, but it's still the same shape, but it's going to be just jumped up and massive. And this one is what I used to use on 14 pieces. So we're gonna take that section, so it's still deep, yeah? Load. Now, when you're painting something like this, you always want the lighter piece towards the face and the depth going backwards. Nobody wants darkness towards the face, generally speaking. Whether she's a level five, six, seven, eight, nine, or 10, or a four or a three. There. See that? No harsh line, nothing underneath. There. Now what you see there is you see a smooth transition. But I do notice that some people paint like that and that creates lines that you can see. So always try and take your brush and skim it over the surface of the hair. There. That's still. You like that shape? See how soft that blend is? 
and it's exactly the same as that and that, but it's just bigger. So it allows you, Bio's allows you the creativity on the pattern as you're going along. Let's do one in here. Now, let's do one like that, that's smaller than that one, but bigger than these two here. So you get to kind of see the whole feel. So again, still take that V underneath. There we go. Wow. I can't believe the time's gone that quickly. We'll keep going, Jack. Having too much fun. See that? So it's smaller. So this is what I'm talking about, guys, when I'm saying to you, if you learn the gestures, you can then go on and create whatever look you want, whatever look your client wants. It's just not about understanding it and how it works. Yeah. Same, this one. Then this one's a smaller version. That's a smaller version. And that's the smallest version. It's just about playing. Playing, playing, playing and understanding. Good, I'm liking the fact that everyone seems to be liking this. Now let's do, uh, we've got plenty of time. Let's do some creative. I'm just gonna take a section across the top, just for ease. Normally I would round that out. Now, creative. It's about being able to do a blend, not to the root, not to the root, that still is seamless without having to do a root shadow afterwards, which takes longer. So it's about making it look lived in without doing too much work. And I'm all about that. Thank you very much. Let's do one here. So again, you still take the V, and the V size just depends on what's going on. Let's see, there, that's better. Poor doll head. Can you see? I think so, yeah, great. Right, load in the middle. There. Just do like that with the back of your finger, just softens that line for you. Absolutely nothing underneath, guys. And then saturate at the end. There. That allows you that lovely transition without having to worry about doing a blended in route. Now we can do this again, but we're gonna make it a little bit deeper. This one was a bit heavier, still nice. But let's see another option. So still do the V underneath, which is great, good. back of your finger, obviously with a glove on. Just feather that through and you can see the depth in that, but it's still soft at the main points. Absolutely nothing underneath. So it looks heavy, but it's gonna be super, super soft. Nice. That's four of the gestures. You like? Now, the trick is to kind of know your plan before you actually color the client's hair, before you balayage it. I generally do bigger sections underneath on long hair because, especially long, um, simply layered hair, because it's easy to cover a bigger surface through there so I can work quicker. And then I go finer through the top so it's more delicate. So you've got weight of color through there and it goes into softness on the top area. It really works very well for me. And I hope that, you know, that some of this helps some of you guys too. Now let's find, where is she? Here we go. Bring her up, there. God, 
glasses are falling off. I need to see an optician. Now, face frames are uber important. They can be done at the backwash or they can be done as you're doing the client. As we go back into the salon and I've got clients that might want a little brightness around the face, I might do their global tint in the chair, shampoo at the basin, towel dry and paint around the hairline just to give her a little bit of pop. Or I might have done a blonde and I want her to be a bit blonder and I might just paint the front at the basin too. So you can do it either way, in the chair or at the basin. The rules still apply, it's slightly different and I'm gonna show you two versions. I'm gonna show you a heavy paint and I'm gonna show you a little softer paint. So let's start off with the heavy paint. Literally, this is brilliant because these clips just push the hair out the way for me. I'm going to literally take a section and take a slice. Oh, there. Let's just knock this out of the way. You don't want anything in the way. It's easier just to clip it out of the way. So I'm going to take that. Now, if you look at it as well, let me show you how deep it is. It's not that deep guys, because it, but it is a slice and you just want to paint on the surface and it might penetrate through a little bit. That's okay. Just pop a bit of cotton underneath it there. I'm going to do one big one here. Now you could, if you wanted to do another one behind it and then another one behind that, but we don't have time for all of that. So I'm just going to show you this one. This one is fun. Okay. Let me just get a bit more product on my board. I'm glad everyone's enjoying it. Um, I'm going to try and get to the questions next. So, literally, here. See how tight that tension is? Really important. We're going to go. Nice. And again. And we're going to do a really heavy one this side. bit more because I can see that some of that isn't light enough. Right to the roots guys. Right to the roots. There. You like that? And then we're literally going to go through to the ends which are there. And we're just going to put the board underneath. And that's what it looks like. So it'll still be soft at the root, but she'll get that pop that she wants, which is really, really important. Now, we're then gonna take the face frame here, and we'll do the same here. That's it, sorry, I look more serious than I am. <laughs> and again, Take any excess hairs off that are in there. Nice. And just make sure that you get to that root there. That's really important. Otherwise it'll look like it's grown out and what you don't want is a grown out looking face frame. Cool. See, and that just matches in here, which is perfect. And literally just pop your board underneath here. Pop a bit of cotton underneath it. If you have some, I've run out. And that's that's a heavy face frame side. Let me show you what that looks like upside down. I think that's really important to see that. There. Look at that. Soft, but strong. Now let's do the other side and let's show a more, a, even softer, it's a little bit like the classic balayage. So it's to the root, but with more negative space in there. So more darker areas.
Good, doll head's still there. How's everyone doing? So this technique, I think this technique can be used on any hair color. It's just that if she's a level four and she wants to be a level 22, I know it doesn't exist, but you know it does, then it's, you're gonna need more power and you might need to do a TZ light. So six, seven, eight, nine, I'm really happy here. Five was, um, essential, was essential looks, the 14 pieces. She was a level five and she got caramel pieces. Depends what the client end goal is. Depends what you've agreed on with the client. Right, get a little bit more product. There are some questions lining up too, which is great. Now this, again, I'm still gonna take a slice. At the hairline, I always take a slice. But again, we want this to be a little bit softer. There. Oh, too much, too much product. You see how delicate that is? Now on a real person, a hairline has got lots of pits and troughs and all those kind of things and peaks in it. So follow those because that's when she pulls her hair back, a client is always gonna want lightness. Now a face frame is always gonna highlight the eyes and the cheekbones so it's going to look fresh and modern on a client who's in their 30s, 40s and 50s and 60s. This face frame is super important for them. It's gonna make them look like they've been on vacation. It's gonna make them feel relevant and modern, which is super, super important. There, can you see how soft and different that is? Now again, the rules apply guys. So you remember that we earlier, we talked about the less space there is there, the less soft it will be get chunkier so if you go higher and you take that out you'll get a heavier face frame but let's leave this one so it's soft because I do like to see the two together if something feels slightly wrong like that does there to me just take the back of your comb the back of your tint brush and just comb that out there there she is she's got long hair this one Let's do the final one. Let's do that here. Take a slice again. Bring her around for you to see a little bit. I hope you've enjoyed tonight with me. I've certainly enjoyed chatting to all of you and showcasing Romy Clay and Balayage 101. It's been fun. Now this one, I've decided to do a little bit more in there. So it's less depth, but it's still got depth in it. Less, less negative space. We've still got a bit of, um, a little, little bit of negative space there. And there you see, we've got three pieces. And then just bring that out here. There. And let's see what this looks like upside down as well, hey? Oh, oh, right. So that is the softer ones there. So you can see that's gonna be softer, but still weight at the bottom. And this is our heavier one. It's gonna be heavier. So two different face frames using two different kind of gestures for you. Good, I'm glad you like that. So, let's have a look at a couple of questions and see if everyone got answered. Yes, we are gonna save this video, honestly, and I've got loads on my channel too that show you all different things. Let's have a look at some questions. If I can answer, if I can. oh, they're coming. Okay, I'm doing really well, thank you very much. Right, this is a good one. This is a great one. So how do you have more dimension months later? Now, if you take those V sections that I took and you paint, when the client comes back in in three months or less, you can actually find those pieces and pick them up again and your start point is the end point of your last time, if that makes sense. So it makes it really, really easy for you to do that. Um, would I use this technique on a level two? So the question is, the most appropriate 
response to that is, is what does the level two want to be? If a level two is darkest brown and she wants to be a light brown, I might get three levels of lift from it, then I'm fine. But if she's a level two and she wants to be a super blonde, then I'm not gonna use this technique. So it's all about how much lift you can get and whether or not you're gonna get the result that the client wants. Don't be afraid to say to a client, I'm not going to paint your hair, I'm going to give you that effect with a TZ light and then you go straight into your Blonde Me 9 Plus and use that and you'll get the lift that you want on that level too. So there are lots of options, be confident, paint with passion, paint freely and also know your worth, which is really, really important. So once again, my name's Jack Howard, I've been showing you Balayage 101 with the clay from Blonde Me. It's up to seven levels of lift, it is it is developed, has been developed to use specifically for painting. You mix it one to one and you get the most sublime looks. It's easy to paint with and I really enjoy it. I hope that you've enjoyed today. I hope that this saves for me. I hope that you're all safe and I'll see you very soon. I'm going to be on the Canadian site next week and I'm doing all sorts of bits and pieces and I'm back here next week with Leslie. Leslie and I are going to be talking something else. So I look forward to seeing you then. Take care, my friends. Peace out.